Hello, and thank you for your interest in this topic. Today, we are going to be talking about stacking soybean cyst nematode and disease resistance in high yielding soybeans. My name is Chris Smallwood, and I am a research geneticist with the USDA ARS. And this talk is part of the 2022 Myelin No Tail Conference. So, a little bit about soybean cyst nematode. SCN is a microscopic worm which parasitizes soybean roots. It is the most harmful soybean disease in the United States, with loss estimates exceeding $1 billion annually. Below, you can see a few pictures of cysts um, bulging from soybean roots. You have a zoomed out picture and then a zoomed in picture where you can see them a little more clearly. So a few strategies for mitigating soybean cyst nematode include cropping systems, such as crop rotation, or using a non-host crop rotating with soybeans to lower the population levels. Fortunately, there are many non-host crops, such as corn, cotton, and um, wheat, and rice, which can be used in this strategy. Um, there's also cover cropping using a non-host crop, which can have some effect. Um, and there are many available cover crop species which are non-host as well. Secondly, there are treatment options, including pneumaticide, pneumaticides and biological controls. These options can include significant costs and the results can often be mixed. And so they're not currently widely used. I would add that there are many natural enemies um, living within the soil, um, such as fungi, bacteria, and parasitic nematodes, um, which could be further studied um, with regard to the biological control avenue. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on host plant resistance. And this is the strategy that we work on in my lab. And there are many different sources of resistance for soybean cyst nematode. And by that, I just mean different um, plants or cultivars or um, which have natural resistance. And by that, I mean non-GMO, which can be used and which can be bred into higher yielding soybean varieties and transfer that on um, to growers. And there are many different sources of resistance. However, a few of them are used um, much more than others. And these include PI or plant introduction 88788, Peking and PI 437654. So this picture was taken from the scncoalition.com and it just shows some of the um, differences in growing resistant and susceptible soybean varieties in an infested field. On the left side, you see the susceptible variety. It is just suffering from um, poor vigor. Um, it has a yellower appearance. It's difficult to specify exactly um, what the symptoms are other than poor vigor, um, but it certainly has a big impact on yield. On the right side, you see the resistant variety and the zero dollars notes that it doesn't cost any extra to grow a resistant soybean variety, and it can often pay off um, in big ways for um, soybean growers. So this um, shows the yield loss um, in a very heavily infested field uh, with a resistant and susceptible variety. And in this case, 50% uh, yield loss, dropping from 62 bushels per acre down to 31.8 bushels per acre. This is an example of yield loss in a field where no symptoms um, were observable, meaning that you wouldn't even know that your susceptible variety um, was infected with soybean cyst nematode, but um, it can often act as a hidden yield. Uh, robber, and you would lose some of your percentage. In this example, 10%, so five bushels per acre. And then another consideration 
with soybean um, genetic resistance is the ability of the nematodes to reproduce. And you can see not only in this example is there a higher yield with um, the resistant variety, but on the right side, you see that the resistant variety did not um, allow for the production of nearly as many um, soybean cyst eggs. Um, and so this problem by planting susceptible varieties builds nematode populations over time and makes it more challenging to um, minimize losses from this. So um, there are sources, different sources of genetic resistance. Traditionally, very few of these have been used in breeding programs. And one um, variety in particular, or one plant introduction has been overwhelmingly used. And this is what we previously mentioned, plant introduction 88788. And this over-reliance on one or few sources can lead to the loss of resistance. And a good analogy would be um, the herbicide glyphosate and some of the weeds that were able to develop resistance when this herbicide was um, applied heavily without using other modes of actions. And so this um, just as a picture of the um, pigweed or palmer amaranth, which has become quite problematic. And um, we want to avoid this happening in our varieties of soybean cyst nematode resistance. So this graphic shows the number of soybean cyst nematode resistant varieties that were grown in Iowa or that were available for in Iowa um, in the years 1991 through 2019. And you can see this number increased dramatically over time from very few in 1991 um, up to many hundred, even up to a thousand in 2017. The takeaway from this slide is that of all the options available, many hundreds, almost exclusively the resistance is derived from one source which is PI88788. And there are a few other sources, but usually these are Peking. And so um, there's really not a lot of options available in um, commercially available soybean lines um, for resistance. And as we mentioned, resistance can decline over time and there are better and worse sources of resistance. And so this map, shows the percentage of SCN populations um, in each of these states or provinces um, with elevated reproduction, elevated SCN reproduction on PI88788, which recall is most soybean varieties with SCN resistance. And you see this number is very high in many of these states, up to 100% in Missouri, but in Tennessee, it's 93%. Um, a, very high number. So by planting resistant varieties derived from PI88788, you're going to have less effectiveness than you would using a better source. And so something that I wanna highlight in my program, we use um, a variety of resistant sources. So presently we have lines that have been released, um, including um, resistance from Hartwig, which is a um, source containing um, PI437654, as well as Peking. And this is a very durable source of resistance to nematodes. However, we don't want to become over-reliant on one source. Additionally, we have um, lines released with resistance derived from PI567516, which is, again, another robust um, source of resistance. I'm not going to read all of the um, PIs listed here, but I will mention that we have lines in development from two different sources. Um, and then we have planned crosses this summer with three additional sources. And these include two lines, or two glycine soja um, 
plant introductions. And glycine soja is the wild relative of soybean. So something else I want to mention is stacking resistance to add protection. And um, we mentioned the herbicide analogy previously. And so I'll extend that and say that by stacking resistance sources, one could compare that to using multiple modes of action. And this can um, limit the nematode's ability to overcome resistance by having more than one um, source or more, many genes that can offer resistance, making um, overcoming this resistance more challenging. And presently in our program, we have released three sister lines with stacked resistance from both Hartwig and PI567, 516C. Uh, this research is documented um, by Lisa Fritz in a 2021 publication. And these lines include confirmed molecular markers um, from both resistance sources. And each of these lines are resistant to the five different SCN races in which they were tested against. And these races include one, two, three, five, and 14. You'll notice that I've highlighted races two and five, as these are commonly considered to be the most prevalent in Tennessee. And down below, you see the arrows and the red text. And um, this is just noting that PI88788 is susceptible to um, races one, two, and five. And so um, this certainly um, provides motivation to use a better source of resistance in Tennessee and really throughout the soybean production region. And again, um, speaking more on um, stacking sources of resistance, we have 17 F3 or higher plant rows um, that each contain two or three sources of resistance um, currently under evaluation in our program this summer. And so this is just simply to say that in our breeding pipeline, we have um, stacked resistance in development and we are working um, toward um, developing new lines that contain multiple sources. Further, we've planned for 14 novel crosses this summer um, with the goal of stacking two or three sources of SCN resistance to um, continue this work into the future. I do want to talk a little bit about some of the other um, fungal disease or some of the other diseases that we work on, specifically charcoal rot, which is a major fungal soybean disease. And it is most impactful under drought conditions. Like soybean cyst nematode, yield loss is often hidden, meaning that it's difficult to tell specifically without destructive methods. Um, you can see below um, ripping the outer skin or cutting the plant in half. Um, the severity of infection, um, but it can certainly impact and often does impact, um, particularly in rain-fed fields. There are presently no molecular markers and difficult um, screening process, and these combine to make breeding difficult for this trait. So I do want to emphasize that we um, have been working with um, Alamu Mengistu, the um, pathologist, USDA pathologist in Jackson, Tennessee, um, who screens varieties for charcoal rot. And we have um, used this approach and um, chosen parents and, popul and developed populations um, with the goal of breeding for charcoal rot resistance. So presently we have 132 plant rows, F6 or higher, bred for charcoal rot resistance, which are currently under evaluation. So again, um, they've advanced through the, soybean through the soybean breeding pipeline, and we are um, looking at seeing if we can identify some uh, lines that may contain resistance. And we have also planned for nine novel crosses this summer with the goal of incorporating charcoal rot resistance into breeding populations. Other diseases that we breed for, um, most of our release lines include a combination of these different disease packages, 
including frog eye leaf spot, stem canker, root knot nematode, and reniform nematode. And then focusing on yield. So I don't want to get away from the fact that yield is critically important in any soybean breeding project. And so just because we were focused on disease and incorporating stacked and novel forms of resistance to important traits, it does not mean that we are not strongly considering yield in our program because we realize that without this trait, ultimately there is no benefit for a farmer to grow. So annually we test for agronomic performance hundreds of plant rows and by this we um, phenotypically evaluate their um, yield potential. And then in multi-environment replicated field trials, we grow uh, dozens of lines in presently maturity groups four early, four late, and group five. Um, further, we participate in the multi-state uniform test trials, uh, which provides very valuable information for public breeders. And our goal, um, is to bring in new germplasm in order to boost yield. So we have done this. So um, without incorporating new genetics, it's very difficult to advance existing material. And so we have obtained crossing rights to elite, and by elite I mean high yielding, cultivars from five external programs. And um, we didn't just look for yield, but we looked for high yielding lines that contained useful disease resistance most notably um, soybean cyst nematode resistance. And so with these, we have many different cross combinations, but specifically I wanna highlight six novel cross combinations where we have chosen high yielding by high yielding parent. Um, and each of these cross combinations also include SCN and other useful disease packages. And so this, these populations would offer the potential to um, select elite performing progeny, um, and then hopefully develop, eventually um, develop a line or, or more uh, that can be competitive in the future and contain um, useful disease resistance. So with that, I am grateful for your time and attention today. And um, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And um, thank you again.